What if I told you that for only $6.99, there was a secret, magical tool that could double or even triple your frame rate in PC games? That's right, Techno Warriors. I hold right here the holy grail of PC gaming the government doesn't want you to know about. The lizard people that run the new RTX order have been hiding this secret from you in order to hypnotize the public into buying new graphics cards. Now I gotta be careful. AMD and NVIDIA might send their death squads after me for speaking out about this. And no, I'm not talking about our GPU enlargement pills that we sell at Kalarius.store. I'm talking about... What? I'm serious. <laughs> not literally a rubber duck, silly. What's in the duck? Okay, jokes aside, what I'm talking about is lossless scaling. This software, available on Steam, describes itself as a powerful tool that enhances your gaming experience by adding frame generation and or upscaling to any PC game. It also, curiously, allows you to run this upscaling or frame gen on a secondary GPU, taking load off the main card. In my last video, I built the best PC from 2015 that I could, which happens to feature two powerful but aging Titan X GPUs. Now that SLI is no longer supported in most games, can lossless scaling fill in the gap? Can this wonder software return this Heroes fallen titan die. of a computer to its former glory? Let's see. Hi, welcome back, I'm Seth. So at the end of my last video, we came to the conclusion that while the best gaming PC from 2015 could still play most games, its useful life, as far as running current AAA games, was running out due to no SLI support in modern games and a lack of modern feature set support on those Titan Xs. Not to mention the absolutely abysmal optimization of some AAA games today, like Monster Hunter Wilds and Borderlands 4. At the end of that video, I suggested lossless scaling as a potential way to get some more life out of a dual GPU computer, and many, many people expressed in the comments that they'd like to see a video on that, so here we are, ask and ye shall receive. Alright, let's get right into it. The PC has stayed the same, minus two things. First, I added a Wi-Fi Bluetooth card for my PS5 controller mostly, and two, I upgraded the CPU from the i7-5960X to the i7-6950X. With two more cores and a one generation newer architecture, it'll let the GPUs breathe a little more and... Well, I just like upgrading computers, okay? <laughs> Sue me. We're pretty much entirely GPU bound anyway. The game selection will also be slightly different. In the last video, I tried to find a balance between games people were actually playing and some that still supported SLI. But this time, I really want to push this hardware to its limits and see what all kinds of scenarios lossless scaling is good for in terms of extending this computer's useful life. Here's the list of games. Also, all the gameplay is at 1080p and recorded at 120fps, then slowed back down to half speed, 60fps, so any artifacts are more visible, and it will actually play on YouTube. You might need to set your video playback settings to 60fps in order to see all of this. Alright, we've got the 2015 PC plugged into my main monitor today, because it's the only not CRT that I have that goes above 60Hz. So here we are in Cyberpunk 2077. I've set the game to medium. It was low in the last video, but I've found we can do medium and still get close to 60, so might as well. Things look great, not as great as if there were ray tracing, but these cards don't support that. Definitely extremely playable. There's also very little to no input delay. Let's see how that changes with Duck Program. So definitely noticeable smoothness improvement. I think our frame rate is about the same, um, a bit below 60 as it was before. Uh, but I am noticing an input delay. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it in post and compare. There's definitely a delay between moving my mouse and moving my character which is unfortunate, because otherwise the smoothness improvement is, is nice. I also want to see if I can see any artifacting. Yeah, I think the text of this sign maybe isn't entirely consistent with generated frames. Yeah, I'm noticing some weirdness and maybe the M and the E there. Oh, I am noticing the gun. When the gun interacts with bright objects, high contrast objects, the scope, the sights sort of get messed up with those generated frames. It's a trade-off for sure. I I would definitely not really like the input delay when uh, I'm in a firefight or something that requires quick response times, but the smoothness is nice. All right, next game is Elden Ring. Game looks great. Um, what settings are we on? I believe we're close to max. Yeah, we're at high. Motion blur off, of course. Yeah, it looks great. 60 FPS is pretty smooth. Let's see what Duck Program does. Ooh, okay. 
again, a noticeable smoothness improvement immediately, which is nice. I love that, but ah, man, there's a delay between when I press circle and when my character rolls. I gotta say with the controller, when I'm moving around, I notice that delay less. But when my character does an action, right? It's still noticeable. Like this would definitely throw off parry timings if I had learned how to parry past Dark Souls 1. Also trying to see how artifacts look on this setup. I am noticing with all these, these raindrops, when they intersect with my character, I notice something. Yeah, the well, sort of hairline of my character does get messed up a little bit when it intersects with things. I tried this before and I saw more artifacting. I'm seeing a little bit. Maybe in post I can bring it up. Let's uh, turn it off just so I can compare again. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's not as smooth, but it's a little more responsive. And any artifacting, you cannot notice it. The hairline of my character stays pretty consistent with how things move. I think I might prefer lossless scaling on a little more, but it's definitely a hard sell for me. If I were playing PvP, if I were getting invaded, I would not appreciate the added input delay. But if I were just playing the single player, maybe, maybe I would turn it on. Okay, so next game is Red Dead Redemption 2. This game is interesting because it does still support SLI. Um, so we get to see what lossless scaling is like on or off with SLI turned off and what lossless scaling looks like on and off with SLI still turned on. Getting in the mid 40s. I'd like it to be a little higher, but definitely still more than playable like this. Let's see if duck program improves anything. All right, yep, another noticeable smoothness improvement. You know, I can feel a bit of an input delay, but I don't mind it pretty much at all. In this game, there's a pretty big delay between you doing, like inputting something and Arthur actually doing it. So adding a little bit more to that doesn't really matter. There's not as much contrast in this game, right? There's no neon signs. So I feel like any artifacting would be less noticeable. There is some fuzziness around Arthur's hair. Uh, yeah, it's kind of bad against at least the sun here, but it's not too bad. Is there a horse? Where's my horse? Do I have a horse? Okay, well, I'm going to go turn on SLI. I was curious to see how frame gen would be applied with SLI still turned on. In this game, I presume one of the GPUs isn't being utilized that much since there isn't perfect two times scaling. Will the frame gen load be put on that card? So with SLI turned on, we're getting significantly better frame rate um, in the 60s rather than the 40s. This feels like better scaling than we saw in the last video. I'm not really sure. Is that my horse? So now if we turn on lossless scaling, what happens? <laughs> or does it crash? I don't think it works. It says unscale as if it does work, but I... Five, four, three, two, one. It should apply, but it's not applying. Interesting. Lossless scaling doesn't work when SLI is turned on. Huh. So I guess in a game like this, you'd really have to make your own call. Do you want a game with a little more base frame rate? Or do you want a game that has double the frame rate of no SLI, but it's frame gen? Okay, next game. We're gonna have to go and turn SLI back off. So next game is Monster Hunter Wilds. People in the comments of the last video had pointed out that there had been updates to the real game that had improved performance that had not applied to the benchmark. So let's see if the real game is a teeny tiny bit more playable because the benchmark was atrocious. <laughs> Me and my friends got really into Monster Hunter World. It is one of my favorite games of all time because it was the game me and my friends got super into during the pandemic. So we really all still wanted to play Wilds, but two of my friends, the ones who have been into Monster Hunter their entire lives, <laughs> turns out they didn't have computers that were good enough to run this game. So we have yet to really get into it, even though we all want to. So it's like really genuinely affected us how like badly optimized this game is. Um, yeah, as you can see, we're still getting 20 FPS pretty much exactly the same as the benchmark. Yeah, it looks awful. And this is just like this very beginning area, right? I can't imagine what a really intense, energetic fight would look like. Ugh. Okay, well, let's see if lossless scaling does anything. Okay, we're getting the same frame rate, like 20 FPS. 
No, this is not helping. Oh my god, the palico text is <laughs> so garbled. Oh my god. Yeah, there's a lot of really terrible artifacting here. There's also definitely an input delay. I would not call this any more playable. This might be worse, in fact. Unfortunately, lossless scaling cannot help this game be any more playable. Now I'm curious, I believe this game has its own built-in frame gen. I wonder how that performs compared to lossless scaling. Oh, we're getting 30 FPS FSR? Okay. So this is worse than lossless. FSR's frame gen can't be run on a secondary GPU. So I think that's what's happening. All of this frame gen is being run on the primary GPU. It's taking away base frame rate. So we're getting less frames overall. Interesting. Okay, well, this looks like crap, very obviously. Let's uh, try our final game. All right, so our final game is uh, Borderlands 4. There's been a lot of talk in sort of gaming culture and in the comments of the last video about how unoptimized uh, this game is. I'm hoping to not spend uh, more than two hours playing it, uh, if you catch my drift, but I bought this game fully expecting it not to be playable on this machine. But as I was testing it, at the very, very lowest settings, it kind of was. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, here we are just past the like opening area of the game. Uh, we're getting up to 40 FPS-ish. Um, it's certainly blurry. This is not native 1080p. I'm sure it's FSR upscaled. Let's see how Duck Program does. Okay, we're getting about 65 to 70 FPS. And again, it's smoother, but again, there's just a pretty big input delay. It would absolutely mess with my ability to shoot things. I think I can still do it. Yeah, I can still do it. It just feels a lot worse. If I were determined to play this game on this computer, which I don't know, man, it just looks really bad. I don't really know if I would keep this turned on. So if we turn it back off, yeah, it's less smooth, but I immediately feel more connected to my gun. Okay, so this game also has its own frame gen. So let's see how that compares. So we're getting 71 FPS. Interesting, we're getting about the same. I would have expected it to be like Monster Hunter Wilds where it was worse. Oh God. Also, there's an input delay, but I'm noticing it less. Can we turn them on on top of each other? <laughs> huh, we can, okay. Now I'm getting uh, like 120 FPS with both FSR frame gen and lossless scaling turned on. Um, it is much smoother but also uh, much more input delay. <laughs> I would not call this playable, the delay is too much, but it's kind of funny that it works. Interesting, I wonder why FSR is still getting the... Hmm. This is when I noticed that Borderlands 4 was refusing to acknowledge my preferred GPU settings and both the game and lossless scaling were running on the same card. When I attempted to fix this, the whole computer started blue screening. So a frustrating end to this otherwise fascinating experiment. So there we are. I have a lot of thoughts. First, while lossless scaling didn't 100% live up to the hype I'd heard from the community, I'm overall pretty bullish on the software. I think its usefulness really depends on the type of game you're playing and what you visually value from your gaming experience. If you're someone who values smoothness over literally everything, you will love lossless scaling. For me, while I definitely value smoothness, I also really value responsiveness and motion clarity. So a lot of the time, frame gen for me just takes away as much as it adds. In Cyberpunk and Elden Ring, which already run at 60 FPS and where input latency and visual artifacting is pretty noticeable, it's kind of a wash for me for whether or not I'd turn it on. You might think differently, and that's totally okay. In slower games like Red Dead though, I would absolutely turn it on, since the input delay and artifacting are not nearly as noticeable. Finally, to address the question of if lossless scaling can revive this computer, well, kinda, a tiny bit. If a game can already run playably, it'll definitely help stretch the hardware a little further, and it's better than letting a secondary GPU go unused. But if a game is not playable, it can't really fix that. Lossless scaling, or any frame gen for that matter, still needs a certain amount of real frames to work. So if you can't hit that baseline like we couldn't in Monster Hunter Wilds, it can't really help you. Even when the upscaling is pushed onto a secondary GPU. So yeah, it might help the computer last a bit longer, but it's still ultimately running out of time for being able to run AAA games. 
I gotta say though, I was really surprised that Borderlands 4 was kind of playable. I wouldn't call it a good experience. It was super blurry and running frame gen was iffy because of the input delay. But it was also fascinating to see with Monster Hunter Wilds how lossless scaling on a secondary GPU gave us a better experience than using FSR's frame gen, which was presumably running on the primary GPU. It makes me think that tech companies should implement a feature where you can run their own upscaling or frame gen tech, like FSR and XCSS, on a secondary GPU. A lot more people have a secondary GPU than they realize, thanks to the integrated graphics on CPUs. So adding a feature like that could be a not insignificant performance boost. If you think that's interesting, let me know in the comments. It would be nice to see the community have a discussion about the viability of this kind of tech. So if you're running an old SLI system and starting to run into unplayable performance in games that you want to play, I'd really recommend getting the best single GPU that you can. Then if you find that you really like lossless scaling, keeping one of your old GPUs in your case and offloading frame gen to that card. That way you can get all the benefits of a newer GPU and all the benefits of lossless scaling. Assuming that the cost of power isn't an issue, of course. These old GPUs are really not power efficient nowadays. So now that all this testing is done, some of you might be wondering what's going to become of this computer. Well, I've already got a faster single GPU option I'll be putting in there. It's in frame. I actually need a secondary computer for some future projects. So today we welcome Shadow to the Calarius PC cult. I, I mean family. If you want to see more videos on this computer, let me know what I should do with it in the comments below. Either way, it'll definitely be sticking around. And with that said, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video stretching old flagship PC hardware as far as possible, consider liking or subscribing. I have an upcoming video stretching even older hardware even further that you'll probably like. Anyway, that's all for now. Have a good one.